Our Lord, about 2,000 years ago, gives us the answer that we've been asking constantly. When we study human history or even examine our world today, and we find different examples of people who live and act utterly contrary to God, perpetrating evil in our world every single day, and we sit here wondering how God can let these atrocities, these evil people, to even exist. We can obviously wrap our heads around the idea that if we have free will, then of course people freely can choose on their own to do evil things. But then what's harder to wrap your head around is why then God wouldn't just wipe those people off the face of the earth? And our Lord has the answer, obviously, in the parable of the weeds and the wheat. And it's not a question of whether or not God could do it. He could do it. We know he can. It would be easy. He has the physical ability to do it. He is omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. From the first reading, we hear the Israelites in the Book of Wisdom marveling at the power of God to free them from the land of Egypt. How God's mastery over the world is a testament to his justice and his kindness, his mercy, though. Those who doubt his power have their minds quickly changed by the example that he sets before them. But then from God's example, we might all learn to be merciful when we act with justice. We, unlike our God, are not all-knowing. We can't read the heart of another person. We don't ever really know what a person believes and how they will act in the future. And so we try to be as patient and merciful to others as we can. But we always act with justice and punish the evil acts, of course. We marvel at the wisdom of God that he can read the hearts and minds of us all. He knows that conversion of the heart is not only possible, but great, hopeful. And it's possible and offered to all who seek after it. And so while we are stuck in our moment of time and maybe are even convinced that we know the truth of who a person is, God can not only know who that person is now, but who that person can become. Look at the parable of the weeds and the wheat from a real world example. In the days of the early church, our Lord scattered good seed, of course. And the devil did come along and sow the beginnings of weeds among them. The apostles and those who they began spreading the faith to were obviously among the first sprouts of those wheat plants. And they might have looked around at their time and saw Saul persecuting the church and thought to themselves, this man obviously must be one of the weeds and God should just wipe him off the face of the earth. So then finally the church can flourish. And if that had happened, we would have never realized the man who seemed to be a weed grew into the most fruitful wheat plants ever. That is the wisdom and the patience of God. And the lesson of the parable to allow the weeds and the wheat to continue to grow together. The two groups ultimately become very clear which is which at the time of the harvest. That's clear. Who produces fruit? Who doesn't? And for those that do not repent from their evil ways and never bear fruit, at the time of the harvest they will earn their just reward. They will be gathered and thrown into the furnace. And so we don't have to worry about these evil people. They will receive what God has planned for them if they persist in their sins. But what we are called to do as faithful members of the body of Christ are two things. We have to focus on our own production of fruit. That is how we prove that we are the wheat. Meaning we have to do the will of God in our own lives every single day. And then number two, we also have to work to try to convert the sinner. Both of these things are accomplished and empowered by the power of prayer which is impossible to do if we only rely on ourselves. That is why we rely on the Holy Spirit to aid us. We rely on the Holy Spirit to help 
to channel our prayer to the Lord, to aid us in our prayer, as we hear in the second reading, he guides us. He guided us here today to be before the altar of our Lord, to receive the grace and strength that we need from our Lord to continue in our mission. This mission that will be ever guided by the Holy Spirit if we but turn to him in our prayer.